Hello. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the second film Orson Welles made, which is The Magnificent Ambersons. Um, I'm not really going to dwell on this plot much because I think what happened uh, after the film was made and all that contained there is more interesting. Um, if you've seen it, you've already you already know what the film is about, but if you haven't seen it, uh, briefly the film really revolves around George Amberson, George Amberson <clears throat> Minifer, and he, he is the only child to be born in a rich family, <clears throat> and uh, he's, he's just spoiled, uh, and he a lot of the people in town, you know, they're not fond of him, want to see him get his comeuppance, and he, uh, yeah, when he finally happens, there, all those people aren't around. They've either passed away or they're, you know, they're, they've moved, so they don't ever get to see it coming. And it's quite interesting to see how things change from the... 19th century to the 20th century, like regarding like things like horse and buggy to the automobile, and how people think, oh, automobiles will never catch on. Stick with a horse and buggy. You're wasting your time and money. And well, by the end, we we know what which one of those two uh, is phased out. Um, and um, while Citizen Kane gave Orson Welles final cut, and he basically made sure it was basically his movie, he got to do what he wanted with it. Magnificent Ambersons, not so much. After the film was made, you know, this is based off of a book that Orson Welles really loves. After it was made and was being put together and screened for the studio and the studio wasn't fond of the film you know well Citizen Kane you know there were people who weren't overtly fond of that film uh, this was sort of different because it doesn't you know doesn't have the whole Hearst angle to it um, but with this film, it was just like, I thought it was just too much of a, basically a downer of a film. There's moments that just, it should be happier, it shouldn't be uh, uh, how, what, basically how the book is, you know. And as a result, the studio, uh, when Orson Welles went down to Brazil to film a, a documentary, a carnival, uh, Says Orson Welles puts it in like videos you can see online, as well as you know, <clears throat> and on the on this on the special features talk about how he as he was away, the studio basically recut and reshot certain parts of the film and put that together. And when he came back, there was absolutely nothing he could do. Um, and he said that he, the way it was brought to him to do that Brazil, like, documentary down there, that he, it was like his patriotic duty to help with relations with inter-America and everything, and it's really the reason he did it, because he doesn't like carnivals or things like Mardi Gras, he has no interest in that, but, you know, they say if it's a patriotic duty, okay, it's not going to really uh, debate with them on that. So he goes, he, given a budget to make the movie, like the documentary, does the so. And apparently they showed screenings of the film as it was with Orson's version. Audiences didn't like it. <clears throat> Apparently, people even laughed at some of the performances. They thought, like, the, 
that the acting wasn't very good, and <clears throat> basically it was not a very good sc screening and showing. Um, but because of, like, they weren't too fond of how some, there were some downer moments in the film, as well as the reaction from the audience, the studio uh, ensured, like, a rewrite of certain scenes was done fast as possible, and then reshoots would be done after that was completed. It was all edited into the film, and apparently 45 minutes has been cut out, and apparently is just lost. Um, I think what some believe is that the studio burnt the footage that way. If the day ever came, and you know, they want to Orson Welles wanted to put back that footage and remove the footage that the, you know, the, the studio released. He can't, uh, you know, he, he, he couldn't. Um, now there's nothing confirming that per, uh, per se, at least not that I'm 100% uh, aware of, though I do know that's uh, a thought, you know, be it per on purpose that some even say it was deliberate, but you know, there were vault uh, fires or films that have been partially lost or completely lost. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, and even if they weren't completely cut out entirely and then just put away to the vault of Orson Welles' version of the film, or at least of those scenes where they were separate, you know, if, if a fire, uh, you know, broke out in said vault, well, unfortunately, that wasn't totally uncommon. I'm sure many people know that how film back then uh, was quite flammable. Um, how some of these uh, uh, vault fires happened, who knows? Maybe it's electrical, perhaps uh, part of the building that, you know, had the vaults that held the films in, uh, caught on fire maybe from a storm or something else. And, yeah. But regardless, uh, the 45 minutes that was cut out and actually Orson Welles himself says it, they really cut out the what the whole point of the film was, which is, you know, you're supposed to see the the beginning, how great and how high and mighty basically this family is, but by the end, they're not. And the whole, the scenes that really would have solidified that have now been removed, and it's sad to know that. Um, and, you know, uh, understandably that, you know, Back in those days, that probably would not be something people would want to really see. But, you know, that is a reflection of life. You know, sometimes rich families have been quite powerful and wealthy for many, many years. Um, at some point, go, uh, fall, either completely Com fall completely and can never rebuild, or they're able to rebuild or bounce back, but it takes time to do so. Um, basically, the scenes that would have truly solidified and have the audience see just how everything crumbled around them, uh, those crucial scenes are just gone, and he says it was even painful even years later that you know, like you couldn't really recover from that that no matter what uh, it, it was still painful um, though the film now is a classic um, and it is a very good film um, as good as it is in Kane I don't know about that uh, but you know Maybe it is. Maybe it is better than Citizen Kane. Um, this 
the set is truly incredible. Um, you know, also the film is 88 minutes, so if you put 45 minutes into that, and maybe you've removed some scenes that were reshot and rewritten, uh, the film would have been like over two hours. Um, but Yeah. Has a uh, uh, fantastic features from various commentaries to interviews with film historians, uh, video essays, Orson Welles of the Dick Cavett show, Cavett's show, uh, segment of a 1925 silent adaptation of this, uh, of the book, audio from a 19... 78 AFI Symposium on Wells and audio interviews with Wells conducted by filmmaker Peter Bogdanovich to Mercury Theater radio plays 17, an adaptation of another Ruth Turkington novel by Wells and a magnificent Amberson's uh, radio play and a uh, trailer, as well as an essay uh, from by authors and critics. That is included, um, and excerpts from a uh, unfinished 1982 memoir by Wells. So, um, if you ever get this film, I think the Criterion version would really be the best. Um, now, I didn't mention this before, but Citizen Kane does have relation to the Criterion collection uh, because this that was the very first film ever released on the Criterion collection back when. Laser discs were a thing. That was the first movie they ever released, and um, uh, they had like two versions of it. Um, I don't believe there's any special features like commentaries or anything, but they had another reissue of it in different cover, basically, or it, there's just a difference within the cover. You know, th this film is really well, well done. Uh, Chimes of Men at Midnight, which I mentioned last time, which I haven't seen, but that's in the Criterion Collection. He has some films in the Criterion Collection, I believe, a total of seven. Um, at least with him as an actor, or being in it. You know, maybe there's one where he's not a director, but at least seven movies that it have Orson Welles um, are in the Criterion Collection, at least as of now. Um, I think it would be really cool if they did get the license to re-release Citizen Kane uh, in uh, <clears throat> through Criterion, you know, if the Criterion was able to get the licensing for that film, as well as, you know, to so it'll be a companion to the Magnificent Ambersons and some of his other works. Uh, especially if it could be done next year, because that's the 80th anniversary of the film. Um, this film came out uh, the year after Citizen Kane, so uh, this year is its 78th anniversary. Yeah, so, you know... Uh, both this film and Citizen Kane aren't yet 80. Um, but both are, are really great films. Um, I think Citizen Kane more so, but, you know, this is a very good film. You know, it is a classic, and I definitely see why. Though it is unfortunate that Orson Welles' version, the version he wanted everyone to see with certain scenes, seems to be gone now. Um, Uh, who knows? You know, maybe someone somewhere has some of the raw footage of the film, like the entirety of Orson Welles's. Like, perhaps it's in someone's collection. They might not know it, a film, film collection, and so they might have a print of that. Uh, I know that sounds unlikely, though. Some movies have been put back together. 
I think I believe Metropolis. That was how that film was put together. Many people had versions on film of that film, of that film, and like longer versions than what had been previously released on home video. And as time went on, they were able to basically recreate, reconstruct that entire film. It would be great if one day this film had a similar treatment, though it does seem very likely, unfortunately. Um, Tim Holt uh, played uh, George Amberson, um, but uh, in the radio play, uh, Orson Welles did that. He played that part. He played the lead. But he decided just to focus on being the director and producer after writing the film. And he does appear in the movie um, as the narrator. So you don't see him, but he is in it. He's just narrating the film. So that's if you've never seen the movie. Um, you, and if you were wondering about it beforehand, about Orson Welles. He is in the film, but not not physically. Um, so yeah, uh, rewatching this film in Citizen Kane was really fun. Uh, I enjoy the, the these two films. Um, I hope to uh, watch uh, some other Orson Welles film. I know I definitely own another film by him. So uh, perhaps in the near future I will. Uh, talk about that film as well as if I'm able to find another film or two of his on streaming I can I could possibly discuss that uh, those films too um, but you know you know it, this is this film has an interesting history then again it's made by Orson Welles and Orson Welles is kind of an interesting person it's pretty interesting. So, uh, till next time, I hope you are all having a great day, a great weekend, and a great week, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.